Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog, and in this video we're taking a look at the iPhone 12, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max, or 12 Mini. Whatever you have, I want to share between 15 and 20 tips, tricks, how to use this phone, and more to really get the most out of this phone. And here I've got the iPhone 12 Pro with me today, and of course I'll be covering the 12 Mini when it comes out next month as well. So quickly, just to get started, in case you are new to this phone, I just want to go over the navigation. This is something that you can skip if you're used to this design. But basically, you're doing everything on the bottom half of your phone, except for Control Center, which is obviously at the top right-hand corner, and Control Center, which is the top in the middle. Oh, my pizza's on the way. But otherwise, if you're in an application, you will just flick up to go home, or up and hold to get into your multitasking, and left to right to go back and forth between your recent applications. Now you also have the ability to close your applications by swiping up, and you can swipe up on multiple applications at the same time if you want to close multiple of your apps. Now a lot of people instinctively close all of their apps when they're done using it, however this doesn't show to improve performance or battery or anything like that on the iPhone. If anything, it's probably using a little bit more battery life because each time you do that, the app has to restart when you launch it, and the iPhone manages that automatically if you just leave the apps running in the background. Okay, so the first tip I want to go to is in Face ID, and this isn't new for this phone, but it's something that I think is pretty nifty. By default, you only have one face available for Face ID on this phone, but just like Touch ID on the new iPad Air 4, you can actually set up technically multiple faces. So this feature is called set up an alternate appearance and this is basically used if you have you know, some situation where you look dramatically different than another situation, maybe glasses, makeup, something like that, that it might not recognize you, but you can set up a second face and face ID, but this also just allows you to completely, but this also allows you to just completely set up a second face on face ID so you can have another person. And this is good for a significant other or just anyone else you might want to give access to a device. Now another thing that I'd like to actually turn off is password autofill. So by default, you can use your iCloud keychain and something like Safari. If it will autofill your password, it'll scan your face and then enter in your autofill password. If you turn this off, you will no longer have to scan your face and it will just enter in your information, your saved passwords and usernames for different apps, which is what I prefer. It's not as secure, but that's how I prefer it. So that's a nice feature to turn off on this phone. All right, next I wanna talk about charging because I know it's a little bit confusing with this phone. So Apple does not include a charging brick with this phone in the packaging. And they say it's for environmental reasons, but it's mostly for money reasons so that you can buy another charger, but whatever. So they used to give you this 20 watt charger like they did last year with USB-C. Now you just get a USB-C to lightning cable. So you can use an old charger that you had from maybe an iPad or even your Mac, or you can charge your iPhone from a USB-C port on your Mac or even on your iPad. But all you really need is an 18 watt or higher charger to charge your iPhone at maximum speed, which is about 50% charge in 30 minutes, depending on where you're starting and how much you're using it. So you can buy this one from Apple for $20, or again, you can use one of your old ones, or you can spend about $12 on Amazon and get one that's even more compact, which is a pretty good deal, and Anchor and Aki make good chargers, and I'll leave those links down in the description. Of course, you can also wirelessly charge this iPhone just like you could the past several iPhones. You can charge it at 7.5 watt speed, but you can charge it twice as fast if you use Apple's MagSafe charger, which is a really cool accessory, but pretty pricey, and you might not want to spend that much money on this, but if you do want to wirelessly charge it at maximum speed, you will need this charger. Now next, I'm just going to be honest, the wallpapers are not that cool on iOS 14. The stills are pretty much the same, the live are new, but I don't think they look that good. And then the dy dynamic is the same as it has been for so many years. Now iOS 14.2 does bring new wallpapers, which is great. And you're seeing a couple of them here, which I have on my home screen, as well as my lock screen, which I think both look great. And you can actually find these wallpapers and a bunch more at iDownloadBlog's wallpaper section, which is where I found these. So if you go to iDownloadBlog and you go to the wallpaper section, you can see a whole bunch of awesome wallpapers, including the iOS 14.2 wallpapers. So if you want to get better wallpapers for any of your devices, definitely check out that on the website. Next, with iOS 14, you can actually get a blank home screen. 
So basically to do this, you're just going to need to put your phone into wiggle mode. And if you have a page with apps on it, you just drag all the apps off and then make sure that it is selected on your home screen. So like right here, I have this home screen to the far left and I can turn it on or off. I have no applications on it. So I just have one page to show off my wallpaper. And of course I have another page with several widgets and then several apps. And this one is the same setup. I have a video talking about how you can customize your home screen to make it look great. I'll leave that video linked down in the description. But basically you hold your home screen and you can change your pages. You can also add widgets using the widgets button on the top left. And then you can always swipe right to get into your app library. Next, there's actually tons of really cool control center controls that you can turn on with this phone. So some of my favorite that I have here would of course be the flashlight, which you can hold and get several different brightnesses, which is great. You can turn that off. You can get to a timer calculator, which includes copying your last result. The TV remote app is great. If you have an Apple TV, you can very quickly control it using this quick control center toggle. So you don't have to go looking for your Apple TV remote. Dark mode is always a great one, especially with these new iPhones. It looks great with these smaller bezels. This one is announced messages with Siri, which is great. You have low power mode. You can quickly start a new note or scan a document just by clicking that, which is awesome. A screen recording. And of course, you can turn the microphone on or off, which is pretty handy. You have your bedtime. You can change your text size pretty quickly, which is handy. You have voice memos, stopwatch, and then you have a pretty cool one, which is sound recognition. And when you turn sound recognition on, it will give you several options of sounds that it can recognize you and alert you for. So if you go into accessibility and you go into sound recognition, you can see all of these different sounds that it will alert you if it hears. So this is great if you need to be alerted. So this is great if you're hard of hearing or a lot of other situations that you just want your phone to be on the lookout for these particular sounds. And this is actually a pretty cool accessibility feature. But if you want to customize your control center options, you just go into control center and you see all of these options here that you can add and move around. And you can also show home controls, which will pop up right here, which is nice to have as well. Next, so the iPhone does get pretty dim in terms of brightness but if it's really dark out, you're going to want to get even darker than that. So what you can do is go into your settings, and then accessibility, then go down to accessibility shortcut, and if you do reduce white point, and then you triple click your power button, you see that the screen just got even dimmer, just by triple clicking there. And that's a great feature. Next, inside the camera, there's a feature that Apple brought over a little bit ago, but that I think most people didn't really use. So if you're in the Photos application, you can actually hold, and this starts a video where it used to do a burst. And now you can do the Snapchat feature where you drag to the right and lock it, and it'll just keep recording and you don't have to hold anything. You can also take a photo by clicking that. But if you actually want to do a photo burst, you just drag it to the left and it will take a burst. So it's a little bit different than past year's models. Of course, if you're in the video mode, you can tap at the top corner and you can change between the different camera settings. So changing the frame rate from 30 to 60 and changing from HD to 4K. You can see 24, 30, and 60 are the options there. And the same thing for slow-mo, you can change between 120 and 240 frames per second, but no options for time-lapse. Now, if you're using the camera, you can change between the 0.5X, the 1X, and the 2, or if you're using the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 mini, you're just going to have the 0.5X and 1. But what you can also do is click on that and drag, and you'll get a little wheel that you can go to whatever you want, not just the 0.5, the 1, and the 2, or the 0.5 and 1. This allows you to easily zoom in and out, but you can also pinch to zoom. Now, one of the settings that I like to change is under camera and a few things that you can do here you can turn the grid on or off which I do like just for the sake of positioning and getting the rule of thirds when you're taking photos and videos and you can also have the options to preserve settings so if you change something while you're shooting you can choose between whether you want it to keep those settings or go back to default now I like turning this feature off for live photos because that way when I take a live photo and maybe I turn off live photos for some reason I want to make sure that it goes back to turned on. So I turn this feature off for live photos, but you can keep it for the other modes. So for instance, the camera mode. If last time you used the camera, you were in video, and when you go back, you will still be in video. 
Whereas if you turn this feature off, it'll default back to the photo mode. There's also a feature called mirror front camera, which basically allows you to flip the way the front facing camera looks on the iPhone. So you can see what this looks like if I take this picture, versus if I flip it, And of course you can see that they're just flipped from each other. This is me over here, and this is me over here. And of course in the camera you can go into a wider angle front facing picture by clicking this little button right here. And you can see it gets wider and less wide. And finally the last little shortcut I have here is to disable auto brightness, which I, I really don't like auto brightness. Uh, but it's a little bit trickier to find than it used to be. So you go to accessibility, display and text size, and you go down to the bottom and you can turn auto brightness on or off. All right, that's all I have for this video. I'll leave some other cool iOS 14 guides down in the description if you're interested, but thanks for watching.